Hey, welcome back to 39 Below, a channel dedicated to picking, hustling, grabbing, finding, sourcing, robbing, no, not stealing, dealing, wheeling, and filling items, services, and goods for $39 and below, only to be sold at a much higher price. Um, got some secrets to share with you today. I wrote it here. Well, let me get... Okay, he wants me to buy, so let me get him over here. Um, I'm just working on some paperwork, so I came across something that I want to share. This is going to be up on my website. It's going to be up on our blog. It's going to detail out. It's a secret that um, a lot of folks um, know already. Uh, a lot of business owners use, uh, but I want to share this with you. Something that I look at, something that um, myself and my team, we've always looked at when we um, acquired a company uh, and or um, trying to boost some profits. So um, I scribble it down here. This Again, this is going to be um, on my email, or sorry, it's going to be on my website. Um, we're going to blog about it today, uh, 39-below.com. That's www.39-below.com. So the the topic is um, increasing your profit margin and a simple way to do that, which is controlled actually by you and not by the marketplace itself or by the uh, buyer. Um, there is an eBay, uh, this is going to be about an eBay sale, so um, there is a fixed price to an, to an extent that eBay buyers pay. Um, they're on there, they're also bargaining, there's some resellers, there's arbitrage going on on eBay. So looking for the, the, the best price that they can get an item at for the best value. And um, the value of an item on eBay obviously is a lot different than the value of an item at a Target or a Kohl's or Bloomingdale's or Macy's or wherever you might um, shop in your town. So uh, we all know that. So when we look to resell a product, we have to uh, look at the uh, cost of goods sold um, and look at the average price of what those items go for. So we can control that to a point, but we can't. So um, this is a little bit of an example. Again, this will be up so you guys will be able to see this. I'm going to kind of go line by line here. First, what I, what I always do is I put average uh, average item cost, and it's what it cost me. So this is just examples. So for instance, if an item cost $3, which consists of, there's three major parts in that cost. There's the cost of goods sold. Okay, that's the labor. That's what it costs you to go to that place to get it. Obviously, you pay for wear and tear in your vehicle. You pay for gas, or if you have an employee that goes out and picks, um, that's going to be your uh, a labor, which is part of your cost of goods sold. You have overhead, um, power, electricity, if you have an office, if you have a warehouse, if you have a storage unit. Um, there's overhead to that. And then, of course, the item cost itself. Um, if you find the item for 50 cents or a dollar or three dollars or whatever the, the case is, that all goes into your cost of goods sold. The number two is fees. We do know that eBay, PayPal, Etsy, um, a lot of them carry fees. Even if you have a um, flea market stand, you still got to pay a deli cost. That kind of goes into your overhead. But there's always fees involved somewhere, somehow. If you use the square, I don't care. Whatever way you're using it to take payment, you're obviously going to pay a percentage between 2 and maybe 4%. The next thing is shipping. If it's paid by you, if you offer free shipping, um, then that's going to be built into your fees or into your costs. Um, if the buyer does, you're going to get hit with the fee on your shipping. So, I just said if the item cost $3, that's including all these factors. If you sold that item for $13, that's a $10 profit, okay, on that item, which is a 333% gain. Um, end over end there on that, on the, it's called OOP, so you made 333% on that price, um, profit margin on that price. Now, what we look at is, all right, we can't really control the end sale price. We can if we take better pictures, if we list the item better, key, uh, if our keywords are, are more consistent with the marketplace, uh, more, more attractive in our taglines. Um, so we can always increase the pricing a dollar or two or three. But again, that's out of our control to an extent. What we can fully control is the cost that we put into the item. Um, if I buy more in bulk, I can reduce my cost. Uh, so what we look at is how can we control the things that we can control, and that is in our costs. So if you were to lower that cost from three to two dollars, sold it for the same price, you'd make eleven dollar profit. That's a five hundred and fifty percent gain. That's two hundred and seventeen percent over just because you reduced it by 
a single dollar. And again, it works on both sides if you, if you, if you increased it and you um, got $14. But again, sometimes the marketplace sets that price and you're stuck around that. So, so a lot of times people will start off at $18, they'll reduce it to $14, then, then they'll reduce it down. But if you just kind of have a consistent basis price point that you know that you're going to sell in, in item at, you know your margin is only going to be in that $10 range per item. If you can increase it just $1 by reducing here, you're looking at 217%. And imagine if you go ahead and scale that. Scalability is key. I'm going to have some blogs. I'm going to have some things about scaling. And um, what I've done in some businesses that I've had and how we went ahead and scaled. Uh, I'm not talking fran franchising, Adam. I'm not talking opening up lo lo you know, locations, but doing it on the Internet and doing it online and scaling and um, really making the profit. So I want to share that with you. If you have any questions, you can always send me an email, Anthony. 39 below at Gmail or leave, leave a comment below. We'll get back to you within 24 hours. See you on the flip side.